Many friends have asked me, have you been vaccinated yet? Shouldn't clergy have some kind of special status? Or if not, wouldn't you count as a teacher? No, I have not yet been vaccinated. Although I am very eager to roll up my sleeve and take the shot when it's my turn. I'm thrilled that my parents have been vaccinated among so many of our congregants in groups 1A and 1B. Some clergy work as chaplains. They've been risking their lives and health by being present in hospitals with members of our armed services, in long-term care facilities and hospices, and in prisons for nearly a year. Those clergy deserve priority, and in healthcare settings, at least they're getting it. Otherwise, clergy should await their eligibility alongside everybody else based on age and pre-existing conditions. More broadly, clergy should not be granted vaccination priority. We at Congregation B'nai Israel have demonstrated houses of worship are able to provide programs and services from a distance without endangering anybody's health. Unlike private, public, and preschool teachers, the fact that we do not offer in-person classes does not place an undue burden on students and their parents. Still, I am eager to be vaccinated. I suspect that's true of everybody worshiping with us tonight, except, of course, for the grateful folks who've already had one or both of their shots. One could accuse us of coveting the vaccine. After all, if we define coveting as wanting something that everybody else has, I am as guilty as everybody. However, the more I have thought about coveting, the sin prohibited in the 10th commandment in this week's Torah portion, I'm not so sure. The least known and most poorly understood of the Ten Commandments is the last one. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's spouse, nor servant, nor ox, nor ass, nor anything that is your neighbor's. In a book called Inscribed, Encounters with the Ten Commandments, Alan Marina suggests a three-step process to avoid coveting. We begin that with recognizing that we want something that we do not have. Then we are enjoined to conquer that impulse. Finally, we must rectify the impulse itself so that the feeling of craving does not even arise in the first place. So to take those one at a time, first, we must come to terms with the reality that we crave something which is not ours. The Tenth Commandment demands that we acknowledge that we are disturbed by unhealthy desires. We've permitted the Yetzirah evil inclination to get the best of it, us. God would be accused of wishful thinking if the Holy One were really asking us not to want something that isn't ours. Yes, I want the COVID vaccine and I want it now. No, the Tenth Commandment is not a prohibition against wanting something that belongs to somebody else. Still, the first step to avoiding the sin is to recognize that we do want that thing that we don't currently possess. Thus, we come to the second step. We must overcome the covetousness. Alan Marinus explains, it is an act of will to walk a route that avoids that person's house or car or choose a different class or frequent a different coffee shop where you will not see that person and so on. Citing Rabbi Nubacha, Alan is urging us to avoid the stimuli that torture our souls when we do not possess the things we crave. With respect to the COVID vaccine, those of us who do not yet qualify would do well to avoid pestering our doctors and pharmacists demanding to place our names on lists that do not yet exist. Finally, Alan writes that the third step involves rectifying the impulse itself so that the feeling of craving does not even arise in the first place. Alan reminds us that in Pirkei Avot, Ben Zoma rhetorically asks, who is rich? And answers that the truly wealthy person is one who is samech bechelko, happy, with one's portion. This part is harder, 
But I do find myself able to enjoy some of the benefits to me of this pandemic. I love my commute, most often from one part of my house to another. I'm thrilled that our out-of-town members and friends enjoy equal access to our programs and services now. I'm grateful for the care taken by our congregation's COVID response task force. And I'm proud of our members who wear their masks, keep their distance, and live responsibly in challenging times. And I'm grateful to the scientists who've created the vaccine that I'm tempted to covet, and to God for creating the world with the possibility for such brilliant minds to harness natural phenomena for healing. Such is my lot as I await the vaccine, contentment which makes me less likely to covet it. Psychologically, we do well to acknowledge all that the pandemic has taken from us and all of our disappointments. At the same time, we may find peace and contentment in taking this time to recognize all the goodness in our lives, much of it unaffected by the pandemic and more that we look forward to resuming in a now foreseeable future. Yes, we all want the coronavirus vaccine and we want it now, unless we are already celebrating that we've had it. God would be foolish to command that we shouldn't want that. As guilty as we may be of a panoply of sins, though, I hope that we do not covet that vaccine, which would be the case if we were obsessing about how we might maneuver to get vaccinated out of turn, and even more, if we were actually pulling strings to be vaccinated before we are eligible. Such an unhealthy fixation would disturb our equanimity, our peace of mind, and if we acted on it, be immoral. Instead, commanded not to covet, we wear our masks, stay home, and keep our distance when we go out, and continue to do so until our rightful term to be vaccinated, and then, as we hear, even longer than that, with gratitude to God and to all who have made the vaccine possible. Amen.